Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're doing well. In this video, I want to break down how we are currently running and scaling Performance Max campaigns for our e-commerce clients. I recently made a full training document that I want to walk you through today. I'm going to leave the link to it in the description. I think it's super, super valuable. But stay here, watch the video because I'm going to be giving a lot of secrets away. Now we have spent well over $5 million on Performance Max campaigns. And if you don't know what they are, they are one of Google Ads's most, well, probably the most prominent campaign within Google Ads. They are essentially all of the different campaigns when Google rolled into one. So search, shopping, video, display, discovery, all in one campaign, very much controlled by AI. And um, essentially Google is going across all of these different placements to find your ideal customer. Now, if you are an econ brand currently, I would highly, highly recommend running Performance Max campaigns if you're not already. Um, and if you are already running them, then stick around because I'm gonna show you how to optimize them and actually get more out of them. Now, as you can see here, this is the training. We've got the Pmax basics. We've got some case studies of some of the results we generate with Pmax. Um, we've got a setup guide and we've got a scaling guide here. So let's jump in and actually learn what the hell Pmax even is. So um, why should you listen to me? First of all, um, if you don't know, I run a, uh, an agency called The Paid Search Company. We are a Google and Bing Ads exclusive agency. We've spent over 10.1 million pounds on Google Ads and generated over 55.2 million pounds. And that was just last year in 2023. We have an average 400, or sorry, 546% ROAS. Interestingly, about half of that spend has probably been on performance max campaigns. So they are a huge part of Google Ads. Uh, they launched in 2021 and since then they have pretty much taken over um, and they're going to continue to get better and better and better because there's so much AI learning behind them. So as I've explained, they run on pretty much all of Google's different channels. Um, and the good thing about that is that they cover the entire marketing funnel. As a brand owner, you know that you not only need to be advertising to the bottom of the funnel, which I think a lot of people think Google Ads pretty much that's the only thing it does. Um, but you also need to be advertising to the top of funnel, getting new customers into your ecosystem. And PMX will not only show your ads to completely cold customers, but it will nurture them with remarketing until they basically convert um, and become, you know, loyal purchasers, right? So it's going to do that with, um, you know, display and discovery predominantly for the top of funnel. It's going to nurture those through the middle of funnel with search ads and shopping ads, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, if you're not, search ads are obviously Google search ads. It's the top three placements when you search something up. Um, and then shopping ads are obviously kind of the image product tiles that you, you see at the top of the uh, Google search engine result page whenever you search up a product. Um, and then also there's a lot of remarketing going on predominantly on YouTube and uh, display. So there's a lot of automation and machine learning in here, which is a good and a bad thing, um, as you'll soon see, because the problem with machine learning is it requires a lot of learning. So one of the criticisms that Pmax gets is that whenever you kind of make a big change, it's gonna take one to two weeks to actually kind of get back up to good performance and performance is gonna dr drop for a little bit. So you don't wanna change them too often, um, but obviously in the first, when you're first launching campaign, there are obviously key optimizations you need to make. And I'm gonna walk you through what those are right now. So with PMAX, you have asset groups, right? You typically have ad groups within search campaigns, or if you're a meta ads guy, you have ad sets. Um, same thing here, um, but obviously they're called assets, asset groups because they house your assets, right? PMAX, you have these assets, um, which are made up of images, videos, logos, ad copy, right? So 20 images, five videos, five logos, five descriptions, five long headlines, five short headlines. This changes all the time. Um, so this probably isn't accurate, but it, it's roughly, but that's kind of the, the, the things you need. And so what do you actually want to do with these asset groups, right? So when you launch a Performance Max campaign, you're going to get taken through a, uh, a campaign building flow, which I'm going to show you in a second. Um, but th there's no point even creating a PMAX campaign until you know what the structure is going to look like. Um, and so one of the things that you want to do before building a PMAX campaign is, is understand, okay, what are the asset groups within that campaign going to look like, right? So if you are starting a PMAX campaign for the jeans that you sell on your website, which is probably a good idea, um, if you have a decent amount of budget, upwards of two to $300 a day, um, and for example, you're a fashion retailer, then it probably makes sense to separate, separate your top level product categories. So for example, your jeans and then your, your shirts into their own performance max campaigns because they are very different products. Different people are gonna be looking for them um, at different stages of the, of the buying journey. Um, now, one thing that we do recommend is consolidating when you're first getting started and or if you have a low budget, right? So if you've only got about $100 a day to spend overall within Google Ads, then I would not recommend any more than one performance max campaign. And even then, maybe standard shopping is better for you. Um, but if you have enough budget to, to play around with and you have enough data, right? You're not a brand new Google Ads account. 
because if you are a brand new Google Ads account, then you're working with very little data, which is going to give you very little flexibility. Um, then I would recommend multiple, but we'll talk about that in a second. So anyway, let's say you've got one for jeans, then the asset groups below that will be um, the sub product categories. So top level product categories probably get their own campaign, sub level product categories probably get their own asset groups. And for obviously for jeans, what are sub product categories? Well, they're going to be the types of jeans that you sell. So skinny jeans, wide leg jeans, ripped jeans, etc. Why do we want to do this? Because we are basing those assets that I just talked about around the product, okay? So obviously skinny jeans are gonna have different images, different ad copy, different um, uh, videos to wide leg jeans, for example, if, if that is a definition on your, your website, you know, hypothetically. Um, so this allows you to have the most relevant assets for the specific product, which means that you're gonna get a higher expected CTR when someone searches up skinny jeans, they're then gonna see your Pmax campaign pop up with images, <laughs> ad copy, et cetera, that are relevant. It's gonna increase the landing page experience and then both of, those, both of those things are gonna to contribute to a higher quality score and rank, where, which is where you're gonna show up in on the search engine's results page, incredibly important metric, is uh, calculated by quality score times budget. So not only is it important to spend a lot, it's also important to have good ads <laughs> and a good landing page. Um, and if you, if you have a high quality score, then you're gonna have lower CPCs and a better ROAS, okay? So these things are very important. A big mistake, as we'll cover in a second, is people making asset groups around things like audience signals or like countries, I just, yeah, it's crazy. Actually, countries set the campaign level, but I've seen some crazy things. <laughs> so why run Pmax, right? If, you, if you're not running Pmax already, um, well, it's very, very scalable. I mean, uh, you know, so long as you have a, a large TAM to your product, total addressable market, you can pretty much scale Pmax relatively infinitely. I mean, I haven't personally seen like a hard cap on a, a, a wide TAM product. Obviously, if you have a very niche product, it's a different story, but because you're obviously advertising on so many different channels, very, very scalable campaign. Automation, which allows you to maximize the effective of group, effectiveness of Google Ads while also achieving a higher ROI. So you actually have to do less because the campaign is more automated. That isn't to say that you should be doing nothing, which a lot of people do, um, but you have to do less than, for example, a standard shopping campaign. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So when should you not run PMAX? Okay, so number one, if you're in a highly regulated industry, okay, so if you have a very, very uh, touchy product, so um, for example, uh, if, you, if you're familiar with Nick Shackelford, he's a big guy in uh, Ecom. He has a company called Drink Bres, which is a CBD related uh, drinks company. Um, I would imagine they are not running Performance Max because Pmax likes to automatically generate assets, ad copy, even images in the future. And so, uh, you know, if you don't have a really tight leash on that, then it's going to get you kind of um, suspended or, or flagged or whatever. Um, so that's the first thing. Secondly, if you don't have a high budget, we're going to to Google Ads, right? So if you have a if you have a low budget, then you're not going to be able to give Pmax enough oomph. It's not going to be allowed, uh, able to gather enough data across all these different channels. I see people trying to run Pmax on $30 a day. Don't do that. It's just, if you're not, you're like kind of constraining the campaign. So if, if that's the case, you're way better off with standard shopping. But if you've got a completely fresh Google Ads account, well, you don't want to run with Pmax because you, you can only use smart bidding. If you're not aware, bidding strategies are kind of what tell the campaigns to, uh, you know, how much to bid, right? Because you've got to run Google Ads in auction. Smart bidding is going to bid for you. Manual bidding, you're obviously going to do it um, for the campaign. If you're trying to use smart bidding with no data, it's going to go terribly wrong because Google has no idea how much to bid because it does not know who the customer is. So uh, yeah, don't do that. In that case, again, you want to be, you're going to want to use standard shopping, which allows you to do uh, a much more manual approach. And if you want to focus exclusively on acquiring new customers, again, I recommend standard shopping. Pmax likes to advertise to your brand, likes to market quite a lot, which isn't a bad thing in my opinion, but just bear that in mind. Um, and yeah, you know, you should have probably a daily budget of minimum, like three times your CPAs. I've heard even people say three times or two to three times your AOV, which I think is quite high, but um, just keep that in mind. Uh, Pmax also has a long initial learning period. Um, and yeah, so I know by this point you're like, oh my God, this sounds terrible. Trust me, it is worth it. I'm gonna show you in a second. Um, awesome, right, so I've covered all that. Let's jump over to um, the Pmax do's and don'ts. So Pmax, as I said, is heavily dependent on machine learning. So there are some very important do's and don'ts. So first of all, make sure you use a high budget, probably no less than $100 a day, because Pmax is spending across seven different advertising channels. And obviously a don't is to use a budget under $50 a day. I think this is just preventing the machine from learning optimally. A do is give Pmax time to optimize. Google actually says you need to give it six weeks from launch to get to where it should be in terms of performance. I know that sounds very long, but it's just it. It's just a fact of the matter. This will go down as, as Google improves Pmax. But what you don't want to do, and, I, and to be honest, we don't really necessarily abide by this. We do make changes within the initial six weeks. Uh, but what you just don't want to do is 
be making changes on like a daily basis. That's a, a recipe for disaster. Make sure you use fantastic creative in your PMAX campaign. So the better the image, video, and ad copy is, the better your campaign will perform. And obviously a don't is be lazy with that. The do is segment or break out your PMAX campaign into multiple PMAX campaigns. And you can do this based on relevant business factors that are going that are important to you. So it could be profit margin, right? So if your products have wildly different profit margins, then you should have different PMAX campaigns for those products. It could be location. That's a favorite of ours. One of the quickest and easiest ways to scale an account is basically duplicating existing campaigns, but setting them to different locations. Super, super awesome way to scale. And then you've got a traffic budget and traffic volume and budget and things like that. And then, but you don't want to create more PMAX campaigns for the sake of this. I see some accounts with like seven or eight different PMAX campaigns for like no reason, and it's just stupid. Do use PMAX when you have existing data, we've covered this, and uh, do base your asset groups around products, not around things like audiences or other factors, because PMAX will go, go beyond your initial audience signal anyway. So uh, for those of you who don't know, audience signals are a part of your asset group, and that's the targeting part of, of PMAX. But because obviously PMAX is so automated, even if you just seed it, you know, with an initial audience signal, it's going to go beyond that. Um, another thing to be aware of is PMAX likes to cannibalize or eat up your other campaigns um, because Google wants to give it max priority because it's going to basically allow you and advertisers to spend more, which is good for them. Google Ads is a business as well. You've got to remember that. Um, so here's a quick table that's going to break down which campaign is going to be added into the auction and which situation. Um, and so with that in mind, this is why we like to run a structure like this. Um, where we have uh, YouTube campaigns, right? YouTube Shorts campaigns, demand gen, uh, PMAX, shopping, non-branded search, remarketing, and branded search, okay? Um, we do tend to, so yeah, we're, it's not like we're just coming in and running only PMAX. That's a terrible idea. I do also see that as well. Some brand owners will just chuck all their PMAX products into one PMAX campaign and just go on vacation. Terrible idea, you need to have a full funnel uh, structure that's doing different things, okay? And this is exactly why. So jumping into a few case studies here, I won't, I'll go through these really quickly. Um, this was a little one, we just did 10K a month for 30 days with PMAX, as you can see here. Yeah, so this was a single PMAX campaign in the last 30 days, spent 3K and did 10K. Now this isn't crazy by any means. I mean, we've got some way crazy case studies, but it's just to show you that, you know, as a small business, small e brand, PMAX can get you an extra six figures onto your, on your top line revenue, right? Pretty profitably, pretty easy. And in this situation, we're using a little strategy called full build and feed only. So instead of having asset groups based on, um, well, actually this is more of a strategy for kind of one product or one, yeah, I'd say one product or a PMAX campaign. So for this brand, they were just selling bracelets and there weren't really like a definitive subcategory of bracelets. It was just like bracelets and all the product was kind of the same. And so what you want to do in that situation is have a full build asset group and a feed only asset group. Why? Because feed only is going to push more on shopping and this full build is going to push more on sort of remarketing, display and discovery. It works really well. And it's just a great way to get the campaign spending more on shopping, which is going to produce most of your revenue. It's going to be the highest quality traffic. You know, you should, and we'll get to this in a second. You need to be prioritizing shopping in your campaigns. Um, and yeah, it's on $150 a day, TROAS of 300%. So when it comes to setting a TROAS or a TCPA, we highly recommend launching the campaign, wait for 30 days, actually looking at the data there in terms of ROAS and CPA, and then setting a TROAS or TCPA based on that. That was a lot of words, hopefully you caught that. Um, but again, it does improve profitability. I quite like it. Next is a Booker case study where we did 500K in 30 days, right? So this is a bit more bonkers. On the other end of the spectrum here, but these two campaigns here did cumulatively 50k in spend and then 463k in revenue, or actually 500k if you look at conversion value by conversion time. Uh, sorry, it's just make this bigger here. So that's over a 10x return on ad spend. This was during a sale that they ran, um, but Pmax is very effective at capitalizing during these kind of high traffic volume periods. So um, yeah, glad we ran it. <laughs> Cool, moving on to um, PMAX setup. So first things first, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got conversion tracking in place. As I said, it's a very, PMAX is a very automated um, campaign, which means it's less about the buttons that you push and it's more about the data that you feed the, the machine. Uh, it's more about the inputs there. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got conversion tracking set up and that it's accurate. I can't tell you how many brand owners miss this. Don't double track, don't triple track. Just have one active primary conversion action, right? So you can set your conversion actions to primary, secondary, make sure there's only one primary purchase conversion action. Um, and the easiest way to do this is by downloading Google and YouTube, um, that Shopify sales app. It's gonna install conversion actions for you. If it doesn't, you can hit up support and they'll make it, they'll, they'll, they'll install it all again. Um, and then you can use that. Um, or, and then yeah, for feed management, so product feed management is the second part of, of setup. I'd say there's two main areas, conversion tracking and feed management. Highly recommend using a tool called Simprozies. It's just a simple Shopify app. 
and you can use it to optimize things like your product titles and descriptions without actually changing the info on Shopify. So that's gonna get you nice out of the way there. Um, and then you can kind of like hire people like us to do the extra bit, which is like installing enhanced conversion tracking um, and using more advanced tools like data feed watch for feed management. Um, so yeah, um, in terms of the structure, we've already covered this. You wanna make sure that you keep it simple. You start with one campaign and you only segment into multiple PMAX campaigns if you have good reasons to do so. Don't copy what someone else tells you to do. Find out what best work, works best for you. I would start, if you're new to PMAX, with all products in one campaign. This allows Google to sort through the products and learn faster because there's more data. And then once you're over uh, 50 sales a month, um, or if, you, if you're under 50 sales a month and keep everything in one campaign, you don't have enough data. But if you are, if you expect to get over 50 conversions a month per campaign, so that's like 1.5 sales a day, it's not much at all, then it's time to probably segment out. So you don't want one, you know, end goal, it should not be one PMAX campaign because, you know, that's just not ideal. Um, but also you don't want to have too many PMAX campaigns because then you're just going to get in, you'll spread too thin. So there's a perfect middle ground, which is probably like two to four to maybe five uh, campaigns based on business goals. All right, budget, we've covered this. Bidding, uh, we've covered this. If you want any more detail, you can grab the document below. Target RAS, covered this. Asset groups, um, pretty much covered this. Creative, covered this. Audience signals, yeah. So what do we recommend in terms of audience signals? 10 to 15 search themes, three to five competitive URLs, um, add your relevant remarketing segments, um, add one to three in-market segments, which is very much audience-based, and um, avoid affinity audiences because we believe they're a little bit too broad. There's a nice checklist here as well if you want to actually go through this and um, use it yourself for setting up. This is the kind of campaign workflow that you're, you're, you're um, taking through. So you've got to set your campaign goals, which should be sales, merchant center, obviously link your active merchant center, add your country of sale, so where you're advertising to, um, your campaign name, you've got to have a consistent campaign name structure, of course. Um, I've been over this in other videos, but we recommend targeting. So what you're targeting in the campaign, i.e. jeans, campaign name, PMAX, bid strategy, max EV, location, where you're running ads to, the UK. Boom, simple. Um, budget, you want to set a, a reasonable budget of at least over $100 a day, probably like three times your CPAs or at least $100 a day, one of those two. Bid strategies, start with max conversions or max conversion value. Now, if you have a one product store, then it doesn't matter about the conversion value. You're just trying to sell as many of that one thing as possible. But if you have a varying SKU value, um, then obviously max CV is going to be better for you. Languages, self-explanatory, final URL expansion. So this is going to allow you to um, basically exclude irrelevant URLs like FAQs about us. You don't want traffic going there. Make sure you do that. Listing groups is basically where you actually select which products are in the PMAX campaign. So you want to do this by item ID for, pre uh, pre for precision um, and obviously make sure the right products are in the right campaigns. Um, and then you're going to want to add in your assets, right? Your extensions, very similar to normal campaigns. And then finally your audience signal. So the last two things is obviously scaling a campaign once you have it. Now, I highly, highly recommend using this PMAX placement script by Mike Rhodes. You can see it here. It's going to actually break down the spend, the level of spend, the level of conversion value, and the level of sales on each of the channels that PMAX is advertising to, namely shopping, uh, YouTube, display, and search. And what you really want is most of that, in most cases, to be blue, which is obviously shopping. It's going to tell you that you're spending most on shopping. And same thing for, for revenue, right? Um, so you can get the link here. Um, and then finally is just optimization, okay? So make sure that product feed uh, quality is high by editing those products, uh, prices, titles, and images. Again, you can use an app called Symprosis for this. Um, landing pages, right? So you can actually go uh, to the landing pages tab, filter by PMAX campaigns, and then you can actually see um, the ROAS um, the PMAX, uh, the, of the pages that PMAX is sending traffic to. Insights, okay, this is gonna, uh, actually, this is kind of like all the automated stuff that PMAX is going to pull and it's going to you know, kind of show you in a nice way all of the information. Um, and then you're going to want to make sure that you can you can also expand your audience signals, deleverage your audience signals, right? There's so many things you can do here. Um, you want to be increasing by just like 10 to 20% per week if you're in KPI, um, i.e. if your RAS is good. Um, and then obviously you want to go ahead and, and set that TCPA or T RAS after 30 days and then also adjust them. Awesome. All right, that was a long one. 
I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was super valuable. Again, this document's gonna be free for you in the description to use. And um, there's also a link to one of the other sales assets that I made, which is gonna be super useful for you. If you are a brand owner that's currently running Pmax or wants to launch Pmax or really just needs help with Google Ads in general, I would love to hop on a free one-to-one -one 15 minute call with you to see if we can help. All of the calls that get booked, get booked with us. We also offer a completely free audit or action plan if you're not running Google Ads already. Um, so it is really just free value. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.